Okay, hi, my name is Scott Vaughn, and I'm going to start a series of videos now for Calc 3. I'm putting together an online Calc 3 uh, class, and I'm going to create some videos for that class. And the topics I'll cover are conics, parametric and polar curves, vector calculus, and multivariable calculus. And the first video I'm going to do today is in the conics section, and it's going to be the area bounded by the curve of the ellipse. So this is the equation of the ellipse, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal 1, and there's a graph of the ellipse, and the area that I'm looking for is this area uh, in this region that's bounded by this curve. So in order to find that entire shaded region there, um, what I'll do is I'll use uh, integration, calc 1, uh, and some calc 2, some uh, trig substitution, and I'm going to find the area just in this first quadrant. So I'm going to find the area in just this first quadrant. Once I find that area there, I'll multiply the result by 4 to get the total area of the ellipse. So what we'll start off with is figuring out what is um, a function for this, this curve just on this interval from 0 to a. Uh, and then I'll, I'll find the area underneath that curve. And when we're done, you're going to see that the total area of the ellipse is equal to pi times a times b, where a are these a is an intercept and b is an intercept. They're the given constants in the general equation of the ellipse right here. So we're going to find the area of an ellipse, and the ellipse has the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal 1 and we'll start by finding just a shaded area in the ellipse. So if I find this area in this first quadrant, then I can take that result, multiply by 4 to get the entire area of the ellipse. So I want to figure out what is the curve um, for in that first quadrant. So I'll begin with the equation of the ellipse and solve for y. Solving for y means I'll isolate that y squared term. and take a square root on both sides. And of course I have a plus minus uh, when I solve for y, but if I find the curve only on the, in the first quadrant, the y is positive. So beginning with this curve, y equals the square root of b squared minus b squared over a squared x squared. Now I can see there's a bunch of squared terms in the square root, so I'm going to factor out the b squared over a squared to simplify it. So b and a, I can assume positive. I'll take them out of the square root. And I have that curve now. So this is the curve that I'm going to integrate on this interval from 0 to a. I'm going to integrate uh, the curve uh, y equals uh, b over a square root a squared minus x squared. So I'm finding the shaded area in the ellipse here, and then I'm going to multiply it by 4 to get the area, the total area of the ellipse. So we can factor out that constant b over a. Now I'm going to use trig substitution, so I'll substitute x equal to a sine theta, and that means dx is a cosine theta d theta, and now I'll replace that substitution, uh, I'll substitute in for x. Now I'm going to have to change the bounds, so if x is 0, uh, then I'll go back to my equation, make x equal 0, solve for theta, so theta has to be 0 when x is 0. And if x is a, I'll substitute x is a back in my equation and find out the value of theta. The theta has to be pi over 2. I'm actually integrating from 0 to pi over 2, a uh, trig uh, integral, where I substitute x equals a sine theta in, in place uh, in, in, the, in the integral. Now, 
simplifying a little bit here. And I'm going to factor out that a squared that I have repeating. And now that a squared, that can come out of the integral. But since it's inside the square root, it comes out as a single factor of a. And that 1 minus sine squared, I'll replace that with cosine squared. Now I have a constant a I could cancel. And I'm also factoring out the constant factor of a that's by the factor of cosine, so that goes all the way out in front as well. And the square root of cosine squared, of course, simplifies to cosine. And you know, cosine theta is greater than or equal to zero on this interval from zero to pi over two, where in the first quadrant cosine is positive or zero in that quadrant. So I can simplify the square root to just the cosine of theta. And I have cosine theta times cosine theta, that makes cosine squared. So I'm gonna integrate that cosine squared on the interval here um, and I'm going to replace that with the trig identity. So the trig identity that we're using here is cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2 theta all divided by 2. Now as I continue from here you'll notice I can cancel the 2 with the 4. It leaves me a factor of 2. So now it looks like 2 a b integrated from 0 to pi over 2, 1 plus cos 2 theta d theta. All right, to continue with this, we will integrate the 1 plus cos 2 theta. So I have this constant factor 2ab. And an antiderivative for 1 plus cos 2 theta will be starting with a factor, I mean with a term theta, plus an antiderivative of cos 2 theta. Well, an antiderivative of cos theta is sine theta, but since I have this extra factor of 2, I'm going to compensate for the chain rule by putting a 1 half in front. So I'll get 1 half sine 2 theta. Now if you think about the derivative of this, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of sine 2 theta would be cos 2 theta, but I'd get an extra factor of 2 from the chain rule, so that's what the 1 half is doing there, compensating for that. Another way you could do this is you could just substitute u equal 2 theta and do this integration with substitution, and you'll see that that'll produce the same factor 1 half that I have here. All right, now the bounds I have on this integration I'm leaving them as integration in theta is a theta equal to 0 and an upper bound theta equal pi over 2. So I'm going to plug in those bounds and simplify. All right, that means I have 2ab times, now if I plug in pi over 2, that's pi over 2 plus uh, 1 half the sine now I've got 2 times pi over 2. That just gives me pi. Of course the sine of pi is 0, so that term's going to be 0. And then that's the result of plugging in pi over 2, so now I have to sub subtract and plug in 0. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. If I plug in 0, I have 0 plus 1 half. Uh, plugging in 0, that's 2 times 0, that's the sine of 0. Of course, the sine of 0 is also 0. So this term is 0, that term is all 0. So in the end, I have 2ab times pi over 2. Now, those 2's cancel, and the result is pi times ab. So that is a formula for the area of the ellipse. Okay, so as a conclusion, we have found the area of this entire ellipse is pi AB. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a helpful video.